This video is brought to you by the Logitech Lightspeed wireless range of keyboards, mice and headsets, the benchmark in wireless gaming performance. The new console generation has so far been amazing for players who love smooth 60 frames per second versions of last gen's best games. Ubisoft especially leads the 60 FPS charge with the likes of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, The Division 2 and Immortals Phoenix Rising. All come fully equipped with at least a performance option or run at 60 FPS by default on Xbox Series X, S and PS5. We can add another to the list here too, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. It was patched around next gen's launch and after all the cyberpunk bustle we finally had a chance to take a look. Breakpoint runs in back compat mode on next gen consoles, it's not a proper PS5 or Series X release for example, but it is now updated to add 60fps and push to a native 4k resolution. At least that's true of Xbox Series X, more on that later. Before we get into the ins and outs of Breakpoint though we need to backtrack for a moment to another recent Ubisoft game, The Division 2. The Division 2 deserves some attention since there has been an update that makes a difference to its performance on PS5, patch 1.31. In our recent coverage, we found effects like screen space reflections and fog were missing on PS5 compared to Series X. Loading times were also worse than Series S and X, but to its credit, PS5 did have the smoothest frame rate of them all. The latest update then, listed as 1.31 on the PlayStation menus, promises to fix at least the missing effects. Hands up, this isn't quite enough to justify its own video, the results are really quite straightforward but for sure worth touching on. So how does PS5 fare now? Are loading times better? And do the changes come at any cost to PS5's robust 60 frames per second readout? Ok the good news up front, screen space reflections and volumetric fog are obviously back. This is likely an oversight from developer Massive Entertainment at the time, a simple flag for these settings that went unchecked. It did seem odd to see it was totally omitted on PS5 when even last gen versions like PS4 Pro have them, but then it hasn't taken too long to sort. The game shown here fully updated is more atmospheric with both added, the fog especially lending that distinctive visual signature for the division. The return of SSR also helps to blend a more authentic mirror image with the non-interactive cube mapping we have on the water. It looked plain before, but now we get both combined, SSR and cube mapping working in tandem just like the other consoles. Here's a comparison showing the before and after between patches on PS5, latest on the right side. It brings it right up to speed with Series S, X and PS4 Pro before it, and normality is restored. It's a relief to see because honestly The Division 2's next gen support, while still running in back and pat, added two killer features as well, 60fps and better loading times. To play on PS5 and have such big visual compromise in effects felt more than a little bit frustrating. Clearly it's an oversight that's now been addressed in the code but what of the loading times? Does it now hold up to the rapid speeds of Series S and X? Here's a quick recap. Fast travelling to the theatre base takes 6.4 seconds on Series X, but you had to wait 16.3 seconds to reach the same point on PS5. It's still an upgrade on last gen loading times, but a surprising gap all things considered. Sadly, even on the new patch, loading times are similar to before, taking around 15.5 seconds on PS5. A tiny bit faster in this case, but well, there's less than a second in it, which can be put down to variance between tests and it's certainly not up to speed with the Xbox Duo yet. At least for now, PS5 still appears to be falling behind and not maximising the use of its high speed NVMe bandwidth. Perhaps we need a proper patch to tap into that potential, to move away from it being a PS4 game in back and pat mode. A final point before we get back to break point. We're talking about PS5's frame rate, it's still great. I barely get a single issue holding at 60fps in our stress tests and that's despite adding back in SSR and volumetric fog. PS5 keeps this advantage at least over Series X but again still renders at a lower resolution on average, between 1890p highest and 1080p lowest which would help with GPU load. Now I dipped into Series X for a quick retest too just in case there has been a stealth update but there's really been no change there. 
The White House lawns still have drops into the 50s, just at the tail end of the skirmish. It's nothing wild, but entirely cleaned up when we jumped to PS5 in the same test. That said, I did encounter a glitch on PS5 initially. In one run of this section, I had a dramatic drop into the 40s with plenty of tearing as you can see. Seriously, it stuck out like a sore thumb, and it's not clear why. But I did find restarting the PS5 fixed it from that point onwards, and it wasn't a problem again. If you have any issues with this, let me know in the comments, but outside of this false start, it's been rock solid so far for me. That about ties up where we are with The Division 2. The main issue is at least fixed on PS5 now. 60 FPS is an incredible addition, and on that note, we can switch tracks to Breakpoint on Next Gen 2. Another great example of 60 FPS having an impact. As a successor to Ghost Recon Wildlands, there are flashes of the big sandbox jungles in Crisis or Far Cry here. Physics for mud are standouts, and there's just an incredible sense of freedom to exploring the island. Densely packed as it is with woodlands, vehicles, and secret coves, time of day changes, weather states, the whole lot. But as was so often the case on last gen, a big complex world like this only ran at 30 frames per second on PS4 Pro and One X. We had two modes, for graphics and resolution, but both shared a 30 FPS cap. And to flash back to performance on Pro and One X for a moment, it even struggled to achieve 30 in the resolution mode. So thankfully, the goalposts are moved on PS5 and Series X. This time, each machine offers a resolution mode as before, allowing a higher pixel count at 30 frames per second. However, the big new addition is the performance mode, replacing the graphics mode, and finally letting us break through to 60 FPS. A few pixel counts before we show the results. Now, unfortunately, this is where PS5 falls short. On PS5's resolution mode, you get a dynamic 1440p at 30 frames per second, despite it stating 4K in the menus. As far as I can see, it's fixed to that top 1440 number 99% of the time and seems to just inherit the PS4 Pro's resolution setup in this mode. Pro topped out at 1440p as well with a dynamic resolution, but dropped to 2304 by 1296 lowest. Though now on new hardware, we're getting a more consistent lock. Not bad, but nothing spellbinding, and certainly not 4K. The reason this is especially glaring is the comparison to Series X, which does get a native 4K output in resolution mode. Here it is, and if we put both consoles side by side, you can see a markup in clarity on Series X. Most other visual settings are identical between Series X and PS5 on resolution mode. There is some variance in time of day, as there always is, that pushes shadows further to the side on one, but all LODs for trees, foliage and so on are matched between them. Even the issues with texture pop-in during the intro are similar, something that carries from last gen. Texture filtering is, however, boosted on Series X as part of the hardware level treatment of last gen code. It's a clear advantage on Xbox as we zoom in on this scene, Surfaces just look, well, cleaner at an angle on Series X, whereas PS5 takes the lower grade anisotropic filtering of PS4 Pro. But for the most part, it's the 1440p versus 4K divide that sticks out in favour of Series X. I've seen no major drops under 4K on Series X either, and we can't forget the Xbox Series S here. Series S has no mode toggle at all. You have a 30fps mode, and that's it but at least it runs at 2560 by 1440 which feels about right given the specs of the machine. Still, 1440p, that really puts PS5's limits into perspective here, given it also runs at that same number and 30 frames per second. Next up is the performance mode. Again, only PS5 and Series X get this option, the ability to jump up to 60fps via a resolution hit. In the case of PS5, you're looking at 1080p as the max resolution, the same as PS4 Pro's graphics mode in essence. Performance mode alters some settings, changing the ambient occlusion method, but in general, it's a very similar visual setup. Series X, on the other hand, hits 60 FPS while rendering at a much higher dynamic 1440p. So that's 2560 by 1440 in performance mode max, though here we do see some adjustments in resolution to hold the frame rate steady, lowest being 2304 by 1296. So there is some flexibility on Series X, but in general, it's still pushing a much sharper picture than PS5. 
Of course, we've seen a similar performance mode on Stadia while outputting at 1080p. That worked brilliantly, and Stadia, in a sense, blazed a trail for what we're seeing here on PS5 and Series X, back and pat tweaks in this vein. In practice, then, the game delivers on next-gen machines. 60fps works so well for this sort of third-person action. To kick off with the frame rate tests on PS5, it's a smooth, near faultless 60 all the way through the game's opening hours here. Even driving at pace through busy woodland spots, sure to stress the CPU for the machine more than most, just kept the engine returning a frame every 16.7 milliseconds. No issue. Now, there is an outlier. There are points where, at random, you can get drops that are unrepeatable in the follow-up test. Check out this assault on an enemy compound. In one test, we're dipping to the low 50s here, a noticeable drop with V-Sync still engaged. And yet, trying again and playing beyond this, there's really no issue. There are other similar cases of this while traveling at pace, a few one-off frames but nothing too glaring. On the whole, PS5 has a strong performance readout at 60, despite a few points where it can drop off. And Series X follows suit. Same again, I have to say the opening acts play superbly on the machine, and streaming in such a dense world isn't a big issue at 60 most of the time. Again, like PS5 though, there are exceptional moments. Points that flare up, almost at random, that simply struggle, like this non-taxing room at a headquarters that kicks into the 50s. There's no clear cause for it, and playing further into the game clears it up again. We also have drops similar to PS5 while just travelling around, almost like the machine's loading up a new segment of terrain just up ahead. So long story short here, there's no clear lead on either side in this respect. The drops happen intermittently, and they're hard to repeat. Though given Series X does all of this at a higher resolution, and with improved texture filtering, it does have an easy to prove edge visually. For performance, it's less clear cut next to PS5, but the good news is they both succeed in holding to 60fps most of the way. Okay, there's one more mode to check here, the resolution mode, which to be honest doesn't offer any real surprises. That 30fps lock is very well held on PS5 at 1440p, and there isn't a single drop under that in any of my capture. Which I suppose is a success given PS4 Pro's drops into the 20s with the very same mode. It's just not as ambitious as you'd hope, and again, you do wonder if PS5 could have pushed a higher resolution. Series X, in summary, does the very same job, only at 4K, without any real drop to report on. And of course, the Series S version runs only at 30fps at 1440p, but handles itself really well. In my view, for visual purists, it makes sense to run Series X on this mode to see 4K 30fps if that's your tonic of choice. But on PS5, having the game run at 1440p doesn't seem quite as worthwhile to sacrifice 60 in the other mode. So to wrap up, the big revelation for Breakpoint is its 60fps mode. What's curious is, there are big changes to the code on NextGen to add this new feature in, but then at the same time, aspects on PS5 that remain in place from PS4 Pro, the resolution boundary being one and the texture filtering being the other. Ideally, we'd like to see more. It's also a missed opportunity for Series S, of course, to not have a 60fps mode on offer at all. CPU-wise and SSD bandwidth-wise, it's in step with Series X, sufficiently so to handle fast travel in big, dense environments like this. Presumably, a resolution drop would cater for the GPU difference, even if it's pushed to 900p or so. I mean, if you'll recall Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we saw a 60fps mode added later for Series S, so hopefully it can happen here too. Breakpoint then, much like Ubisoft's other works, makes a case for settling on 60fps as standard for this generation, something rarely possible in the more open sandbox games of last gen. Whether this is sustainable for more technically pioneering efforts down the line, once devs start toying with, say, ray tracing for example, remains to be seen. But so far, it's felt hugely satisfying to see the jump. 30 to 60. This generation's writing an issue many players have had with the last generation, and games like this and The Division 2 show it can be easily offered as at least an option. But that's all for today. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly with me or the team, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching.
A breakthrough in design and engineering, the G915 features Lightspeed Pro-Grade Wireless, Advanced Light Sync RGB and new high-performance low-profile mechanical switches. Meticulously crafted from premium materials, the G15 is a sophisticated design of unparalleled beauty, strength and performance. Meet G15 Lightspeed and play the next dimension.